what? I don't know. <laughs> You're in for a treat. I'm honored and excited to present today's performer, Lynn O'Dowd. The title of her presentation is Unleash Your Inner Superstar. Lynn O'Dowd has experienced and created the process for reaching your full potential at any age, and it involves getting outrageous and going gaga. <laughs> this process helped her at midlife to leap from being a corporate time management consultant to a rock and roll singer and a keynote performer. Lynn has <coughs> overcome thyroid cancer. She's walked on 40 feet of burning coal. She successfully has run her own business for 17 years, and she suffered a stroke just six weeks ago. But none of this compares to the frightening challenge of daring to go out of her comfort zone to perform at levels she never thought was possible. Please join me in giving Lynn a warm welcome as she delivers her keynote performance that will explain the process of unleashing your inner superstar for greater success and happiness in both your business and your personal life. Ladies and gentlemen, Lynn O'Dowd. the song and who originally sang it. Gifts, 
it can be difficult to step out of your comfort zone. Has anybody here ever had a pro difficulty stepping out of their comfort zone? Or am I the only one? Yeah? <laughs> that was definitely the case for me. I thought my one gift was what I've been doing for the last 35 years. I've been a time management organizing expert. As a matter of fact, the name of my company is all about time. <laughs> now, I know I was born organized because as a little girl playing with my Barbies, I'd actually just organize all the shoes by color. And my 45s, who here knows what a 45 is? All right, willing to admit it, right? My 45s, I would alphabetize them, then mix them all up again just for the fun of alphabetizing them again. Right? Did every six-year-old do that? Although I love organizing, it wasn't my only gift. I had other hidden gifts, but I didn't know it at the time. All I knew is that when I got into my 50s, I felt restless, and I really couldn't put my finger on it. I think they call that a midlife crisis. <laughs> but in fact, it's a mid-level crisis in between the stages in your life. Now this was puzzling to me because I had had my ups and downs, but at this point in my early 50s, I was like, oh, I have a beautiful home, I have a wonderful husband standing in the back there, friends, family, very successful career. I'm thinking, what could be the problem? Well, it wasn't all about time, as the name of my company would suggest. It was time to figure out what it was really all about. See, what people don't realize is that your stuck point comes right before your turning point. And that turning point can give you the time of your life. uncover those hidden gifts. Now, I started out by making changes in my life by looking outside of myself for something or someone to come into my life and make me happy. Uh -huh. I actually had this crazy notion that if my husband would just do what I say and listen to me, I'd be a whole lot happier. <laughs> 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 and when he did, I was. <laughs> but have you ever done that in, other, in another area of your life? Have you ever said to yourself, if I just lost 20 pounds, I'd be happier. If I just had more time or more speaking gigs, I'd be happier. And what is it that we all want more of? Money. money. If I just had more money, I'd be happier. But have you ever known someone or <coughs> heard of someone who has all these things and still isn't happy? Obviously, that's not the answer. Perhaps they were looking in the wrong place. I'm going to make a change for once in my life. 
It's gonna feel real good. Gonna make it right. Gonna make it right. As I turn up the collar on my favorite winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. You see kids in the street, but not enough to eat. Who am I to be blind, pretending not to see their needs? Oh, we're well, deeply scarred, somebody's broken heart, and a washed out dream. They follow each other on the wind you see, cause they got no place to be. That's why I'm starting with me. I'm starting with the man in the Changes ways, and no message could have been any clear. You want to make the world a better place? Take a look at yourself and make that change. I'm starting with the girl in the mirror. I'm asking her to change your ways, and no message could have been any clear. You want to make the world a better place? Take a look at yourself and. I saw someone with Tourette's syndrome. I have Tourette's syndrome. I was ticking and twitching and making these funny faces. I hated that about myself. I hated it. What do you see when you look in the mirror? You know, it's easy to get stuck in the buck of self-criticism, fear, confusion. But the song we open with is not saying we are all born super stuck. It's saying we are all born superstars. So what do you do when you don't know what to do? Hmm? What do you do? Well, you turn on Oprah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what I did. And at the time, she was interviewing Pharrell Williams. Now, you may not know his name, but I think you'll recognize this song, and I invite you to get a little outrageous with me now and clap along. <laughs> Here come bad news, and this and that.
means to you. I'm listening to Pharrell sing that, and I'm thinking, I don't really know what happiness means to me. Do you? Do you really know what makes you happy? Well, she went on to interview Sean Aker, who is the Harvard trained happiness expert. <laughs> and he went on to say that happiness leads to success. Really? Because I've been living my life the whole opposite way. I thought you have to work hard, sacrifice, then you're successful, then you're happy. And he says, no, be happy first. Then he goes on to say, this really blew my mind. Happiness leads to an increase in productivity by 31%. I'm the productivity expert. I thought you got to get it all done, then you're happy. No, be happy first. Same statistics go for sales and promotions. So that begs the question. If happiness is the answer, what do we need to do in our lives and our businesses to become happier? Well, I have to tell you, I'm standing here singing and performing in front of you because I did ask myself that very question, what makes me happy? And when you do, where do you often look for that answer? Well, one place to look is your childhood. And actually, that's what I did. I looked back to my childhood and I thought, I was playing with 45s because I love music. I love to sing, I love to play the guitar, I love to perform. I was a performer, I was an organizer. What does that make me? A performanizer! <laughs> but when I got out of school, I thought to myself, I'm never going to be a performer. I'm never going to be a rock star. So I didn't try. I stopped playing songs. I stopped playing my guitar. I stopped playing for 35 years. Have you stopped playing in your life? Have you stopped doing the things that really make you happy? Well, after listening to that Oprah show, I thought to myself, okay, why don't I try something different, take her advice, and uh, what's it gonna hurt? I'm already unhappy. So, I guess what I started doing again, after all those years? I started singing. And when I did, the floodgates opened. I started singing in the car. I sang in the shower. I sang while organizing. I sang at the YMCA. <laughs> I sang to the radio. You know, I've been listening to the news radio for 35 years. I sang Lady Gaga. Ra ra ma ma, ra ma ra ma ma, ga ga, ooh la la, what your bad romance. No, disco queen of me loves her dance music. <laughs> but I thought to myself, okay, what else can I do other than sing in the car? I'm coming through Facebook, and this quote comes up by Joseph Campbell. When you follow your bliss, Doors will open where there were none. Now that is so interesting because listen to this. I'm thumbing through this time an actual newspaper and there's this ad that says, come be a singer in a rock and roll band. <laughs> singer in a band? That sounds like fun to me. I could, I could be a rock star. I could be the next Lady Gaga. And then in the next moment I thought, oh yeah, I don't know, I've only been singing in the shower with an audience of one. And the last time I sang on stage, can anybody guess? I was 16 in the high school talent show. But I have to tell you, I could not get that stinking ad out of my head for three days. So I thought, okay. Um, let me go ahead and answer the ad and go on the audition. And why couldn't I have gotten that ad out of my head? Because your bliss never leaves you. You leave it. 
So I thought, not this time, I'm going to audition. So I get there, and I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> and the fact that the band leader kind of looked like Phil Collins, the rock and roll drummer, intimidated me even more. But I thought, okay, let me get up my courage, and do I even have to tell you what I auditioned with? <laughs> See if you can guess. <laughs>
Having said that, fast forward two weeks to the night of my first performance. I was a nervous wreck. All that courage I just said about, out the window. You have to remember, it's been a long time since I've been on stage. But if you'd been in the audience that night, you would have been at an Italian restaurant with about 40 other people eating dinner. But what it felt like to me was about 80 eyes just staring right at me. So much so that I couldn't even look. When I got up, when it's time to get on stage to sing, I just held onto the mic, I closed my eyes, and I went, oh, this is not like singing in the shower. <laughs> and the next thing I heard was, welcome everyone, we're LTD. And the music started playing, and ready or not, I started singing. I started singing anything and everything I could remember. I sang my part. I sang the band leader's part. I sang everybody's part in the band. They gave me a cowbell. I was banging my cowbell. I was having a ball. I was a rock star that night. I was having the time of my life. You see, I didn't have to be perfect. I most certainly didn't have those 50 songs memorized. I just had to show up and be present. I had to show up and try. Ever worry that your life is ruined? And does it make you want to cry? When you're out there doing what you're doing, just getting by. Tell me, are you just getting by? Where there is desire, there is gonna be a flame. Where there is a flame, someone's gonna get burned. Just because it burns doesn't mean you're gonna die. You gotta get up and try and try. sung by Pink. Yes, I sang some sour notes at that first performance. I've also sang some of them this afternoon. But I, I was embarrassed. You know, it burned. But you know what? I didn't die. As a matter of fact, nobody in the audience died that night. <laughs> they may have had to hold their ears, but nobody died from my singing. Let me ask you something. Do you think your biggest regrets in life are going to be about the things that you did that you tried or about the things that you didn't do? Let me tell you something. You are never going to feel ready, feel ready to do something you're afraid of, such as getting up on stage right after a stroke, such as participating in a Toastmaster competition, or doing a TED Talk. But ready or not, it's all about taking action and trying. So look in that mirror and recognize your gifts. Take action, and it all works better if you take this one piece of advice that changed my life. Now I look back, listen back, to that first performance, and in addition to the sour notes, I really didn't sound like a rock and roller. I kind of sounded like I was still singing in the high school choir. For this one! Oh, God, maybe my dad was right. I thought, no, if I am going to want to be a rock and roller, I'm just going to have to learn how to sing and perform like one. And as the old saying goes, when the student is ready, what happens, everyone? The teacher, the teacher appears. That's right. Exactly what happened to me. So I was introduced to this local rock and roller here in Chicago named Scott. And he's this good-looking, kind of a cool cat kind of
of a dude with shaggy hair, flip flops, and always a lot of women around him. <laughs> he says to me, Now, Lynn, I can teach you how to rock out on the guitar, and I can teach you how to sing like a Lady Gaga, and I can teach you how to do the, all the things that rock stars do. Well, except for the drugs, alcohol, and you know what I mean. <laughs> And I did learn a lot from him, <laughs> but I have to tell you, these lessons were tough, and not for the reason you might think. Raise your hand if you've ever been hesitant to ask for help. Have you ever been hesitant to ask for help? Yeah, me too. Why? Well, I'll tell you why I was. I thought asking for help meant I was weak. What I learned is that asking for help is how you become strong. And Scott, he was my help. He was my guidance. That's the next part of our GAGA formula. G for gifts, A for action, the next G is for guidance. So ask for help if you need it. If you're going to be successful in any area of your life, at some point in time, you're going to need to get some help. I need somebody's help. Not just anybody's help. You know I need someone's help. Now sing along if you know this Beatles song. When I was younger, so much younger than today, I never needed anybody's help in any way. But now these days are gone and I'm not so self-assured. Now I find I changed my mind, now I've only been up the door. Help me if you can, I'm feeling down. And I do appreciate you being around. Help me get my feet back on the ground. Won't you please, please help me? change my life because getting guidance can lead you to greatness. This journey wasn't about me singing in the band. It was about what makes my heart sing and doing more of that. What makes your heart sing? Do you know? Well, if you recognize your gifts, take action, get some guidance, you'll be on your way to doing those things that do make your heart sing. But we can't stop there because that's G-A-G, -G, gag. <laughs> the last stop in our GAGA formula is A, the last stop is A in GAGA for attitude. So, let me ask you, is your attitude one of too late, too scared, too busy, or is your attitude one of new day, new way? Oh, everything's going to be okay. Well, it's been said that it is done unto you as you believe. So why not believe we are all born superstars? You could be a superstar in time management. You could be a superstar in music. Or you could be a superstar Toastmaster right here at the District 30 conference. All right. Yeah. But if you find yourself with a bad attitude, you may have to change that broken record that's playing in your head. Allow your mind to take in these words. I am light, I am light. I am not the things my family did. I am not the voices in my head. I am not the pieces of that dream I left behind.
Have you ever played the same song in your head year after year? Same old tune, <laughs> same old lyrics, same old ideas. Or maybe you took one big jump forward in your career and in your life, but you stayed there. Well, life is not about one big hit, then you quit. See, what you think is comfortable, safe, and sound are just your thoughts, habits, and ideas holding you down. <laughs> With that in mind, I decided to learn a new song. So I went to my guitar teacher, Scott, and I said, Scott, teach me how to play that oldie Dream On by Aerosmith. And he says, now, Lynn, that song's not really played on acoustic guitar. <laughs> I know. And that song, the difficult song to play on the guitar, and you're kind of a mm -mm -mm guitar player. <laughs> I know. And then there's that high note. I know. But you know what? That note is really high. But when you step out of your comfort zone, guess what? You do things that are not comfortable. Sometimes it's hard, really hard. Sometimes you've got to do more. Sometimes you've got to create more. And sometimes it takes a really, really long time. So I worked, and I worked, and I worked. Every time I look in that mirror, all these lines in my face get clearer. The past is gone. <laughs> sing, sing with me, sing for the years, sing for the laughter, sing for the tears. Sing with me, just for today, never tomorrow, the good Lord take it away. Dream on, dream on, dream on, dream until your dreams come true. Alright, everybody sing with me, dream on. Remember, if you want to go from being super stuck to a superstar, what do we need to do? Go Gaga! Right. And if you'd like a few 
few more tips on how to go gaga, you can go to my website, www.gogaganow.com. <laughs> so let's refresh our acronym. G-O, get outrageous. G stands for your gifts. A, take action. The next G is guidance. And what's the last A stand for? Attitude. 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 Have an optimistic attitude. Because inside of you is the most amazing person this world needs to meet. Believe you can and you will. And when you do, you like me, will be happier, more fulfilled, and successful. Understand something. Life's a journey. It's not a destination. So your full potential is going to be unfolding throughout your entire life. Well, there is no dress rehearsal. This is the real show. Your life, it's your show. Well, let's be honest. I am not the best singer in the world. I am not a guitar virtuoso. But you know what I am? I'm here. <laughs> Remember, you don't have to be perfect. You just need to show up and be present. So what are you going to do with your one wild and crazy superstar life? Don't wait another moment, another day, another year, another 35 years to unleash your inner superstar and go gaga. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to unleash my inner Lady Gaga. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 